Alright. If you guys are just joining me, I am getting prepared to do the live streaming. Let's see. We got it right there. Alright. Good, 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 good. I have you guys on one iPad over here, so I can actually see your comments, and this keyboard right over here, this, this workstation is one of the, um, to me, it's one of the best workstations that I've ever come across till this very day. Now, let me explain something to you. Um, before, I was, of course, I was a kid back then when this keyboard came out. This was like 1992, 1993, or stuff like that. Um, and I was not really into these kind of workstations. I didn't even know what a workstation was back then. So, um... What attracted me to the T2 was the sounds. Number one, the sounds, the style of the keyboard was unbelievable. I mean, before the T2, I basically was playing around with the M1 and the T3, but the T2, of course, was the middle version of it. I had all three T-series. I had the T1. The T1 was huge. I mean, that thing was so huge, it, it basically was half, half the size of a, of, a, of a baby grand piano. Um, this is the T2, which is the 76 key, and then the T3, which I have in my collection, which is the 61 key, which starts from here to here. And, um, I absolutely just love, what, what attracted me on this keyboard was, number one, is the casing of it. The very sleek look of the casing. Uh, the sides have this little dimple right over here, which is really cool, and also has the Korg Emberlin, like, engraved into it, which is really neat. Number two, how simple it looked. I was like, okay, this looks very, very simple. It's just these controls right here, and you got the screen right over here. You have the master volume, you have the joystick, and to see um, right over here was just a floppy disk drive. Um, back then, it was the coolest thing to have a floppy disk drive inside of the keyboard, and you had the two card slots in the back, which is really neat. And, um, hey, Kenny, how you doing? <laughs> and so... I absolutely fell in love with just the way how it looked. Um, Korg came out, of course, after that with the O&W series, which was, it was, it, I mean, it had a nice sleek look to it too, but the, T, the T2 the had more of a, um, the T-series had more of a professional look. Um, wh when I turned on the keyboard and played that sound... I was, I was in love with it, because what happened is that I remember going up to the T, actually it was a T1, before I got the T3 and the T2, it was a T1 that I saw in a store, and it was like for at least $6,500, $6,500, and going up to there, and the first, first note that I played was this low C, and just heard what was going on. I couldn't pinpoint what it was when I, because I was basically, how old was I? I was basically 16 years old when this came out, and when I lifted up my key, when I lifted up my finger, it was like a ghost disappearing, and I'm like, wow, that is the most coolest, coolest thing. So, um, you got the combination mode, you got the program A, and you have the program B right over here. Um, so the combination, basically, it's a, it's a set of, um combinations which is uh, layers of sounds that you have on here which is which is really good um, and you can actually layer more than one sound just on combinations and split them and have different kind of effects to them which is good now the top row of buttons you're gonna see a top row of buttons up here this is one through nine and a bottom row of buttons over here this is one through nine the top row of button is basically your banks so when you press the top row and I wish I had another camera so you can actually see. It'll show you a list of banks right here. So say, for instance, give you an example. Um, there's one over here that's called uh, Reggae Dance, which is number 9, which is 19. You get those sounds. And when I was when I was 16, I didn't, I didn't understand that. I absolutely just... Um, 
just just absolutely just love the way how the sounds and the way how it looked and everything. So what happened is that the salesman said, "Okay, you want to actually get inside one of these keyboards." And I'm like, "Yeah, I want to. I want to. I want to know about more of these keyboards." He said, "When you press the programs, that's going to be your single sound, which is cool." So when I press the program, I get these. The Aeroglide. And it had a feature. So say, for instance, if I were to press it, let it go. And I thought that was cool. So I'm like, okay, where is the freaking piano sound? Because I couldn't find a piano sound on there. So everything ending with a one is the piano sound. So this is the piano 16. went gaga because here are my here are my um basically just um I'm I'm still into the Casio keyboards back then and I heard the Casio piano sound and I I was like okay so when knowing about the banks and knowing about the numbers I went to bank B I'm like okay what does bank B sound like if it has a piano sound there and it had a piano 16 16 foot, which uh, I'm going to skip that. I'm going to go to the piano 8 foot, which is right here. And, and I was like, wow. Incredible, incredible, incredible. So... You know, so I was like, okay, that's that's that that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. What else can this? And this is what the salesman was showing me. I said, what else can this puppy do? Because I see it does sounds and it does, um, it you know, it doesn't have any drum sounds and everything like that. So the first drum sound that I actually heard was the zero, zero or nine, which is the M1 drums, and. <laughs> When I heard this sound, I drove everybody crazy with this one freaking sound. The whip sound. And I was just 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 in Oz, in Oz. I'm like, okay. And then I didn't know what most of the stuff meant back then. Back then I was like, okay, you got the programs, which is now I know what programs are, and you got the combination, which is the combinations of sound and everything. I said, what a seek. I never heard of Seek before, so the the salesman was like, "Oh, do me a favor, just the demo's already loaded up. Just press the start button." I'm like, "Okay, what do you mean by just press the start button?" So I'm like, "Getting," and that was what was playing. And I heard this. Actually, as I said, I heard it on a T1 before I heard it on a T2 and a T3. I heard this and I was like, are you freaking king to me? Are you freaking kidding me? So, the demo alone blew me away. Until this very day, the demo alone still blows me away. And every time I take out this keyboard, I always listen to this demo. Baseline, the drums, the brass, it sold me right there. And back then, this was the this was the technology. It was AI synthesis. Um, Plus you had an eight, eight track sequencer and that's just what the sequencer could do. And after that demo I heard this one right here.
I was completely sold. I was completely, 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 completely sold. And, um, hey Ed, how you doing? Hey Kenny. Hey Jamil, how you doing? I was... How can you not say no to this keyboard? Okay, so, let me stop it and kind of burst your bubble. I didn't have the money for this keyboard. This, the, the T1 was $6,500 back then. The T3 was around 3,000, 3,500, which today you can get a Kronos, which is an 88 key. So the prices of these keyboards were astronomical, so I couldn't afford it. And I was living in New York, and I kept on dreaming. I got the brochure. I looked at the brochure every day. I got two or three brochures of this keyboard, of the same keyboard, the, T, the whole T-series, and put it up on my wall like if I was a like a little college girl or whatever, looking at a boyfriend, my, my dream boyfriend or something like that, or a girlfriend, <laughs> you know? And I couldn't believe it. I couldn't, I could not afford this keyboard at all. So what happened is that um, when the O1W series came out, I was gaga about that too. But um, I was more, I was more, I was more interested in the T-series because the T-series... To me, it sounded a lot better than the O1W series, and like I'll give you an example why. The drum sounds alone. Well, I should say, yeah, the drum sounds alone on here. Like if you go to Bang Two, and there's a. Uh, and you have. I thought that sounded better. Um, I thought, say for instance, this sound right over here, the water, the water phone, was the coolest. You know, I could do a lot of soundtracks with that water phone sound. Um, another thing that I thought was really cool um, was this. There's a toy piano sound. This is another. This is another um, sound that actually took my breath away. And I bought an O1W series. I bought the O1W FD and try to see if I could get a T-Series out of the O&W series, and I couldn't. I couldn't. It's, they had the cards that came with it that said um, Best of the M&T Series, and I played them, and I was like, you know what? It's it's nice, but it's still not still not the T-2. T so what happened is that I bought a T-3 first. When I bought the T-3, I was... I was really happy. I was really happy. I got a T3. It was like, it was like somebody getting their first car. So I got the T3, and then um, I took the T3 back, and somebody actually, no, I'm sorry, I, I sold the T3 because somebody else was selling a T2 for the same price that I bought the T3. So I so I sold the T3, and I got the T2, and here it is to this very day. I got this T2 for, I'm gonna be honest with you, around 500 bucks. The, the total of 500 bucks, and this is not, I didn't get this brand new, so I wish I did because in a way it kind of a little bit is a little bit brand new, um, the way how it is, but, and then I kept the T2 for a long time, and I bought a T1. Worst mistake I ever, ever did was buy a T1. The T1, it was 88 keys, it was beautiful. But it was huge, and I will post a picture of the T1 later on it. Um, it. It was not only just 88 keys this way, but it was like from here to all the way to the, the side of my bed. And it was heavy. It was really, really heavy. So I decided to uh, sell the T1 and just keep the T2 because it was in between. And... Till this very day, I mean, I do still want a T1, but I love, I love the T2. So let me show you some sounds on here. So we're gonna start with the, um, with the, some combination sounds on here, which is gonna be really cool.
This one over here is called um, Cosmic Rain. <laughs> That's really neat. That was the first sound when you turn on the keyboard. That's the first sound that you're going to actually get. Uh, Piano Heaven. This is good for like 90 songs and everything. only 16 note polyphony everybody so if you did something in combination mode it was uh it turned to eight note polyphony but this was 16 note polyphony that's how big it was back then 16 note polyphony okay um here's a jazz band <laughs> to touch so if I would have pressed harder on the keyboard yeah amazing amazing sound right Ed until until this very day amazing sounds um, this one's called ladies On the road. Let me turn it up a little. And it was split. So that was a split point right here. Right over here you get plus a harmonic. You get Technology back then. Pretty good technology. Um, okay, so I'm gonna just jump around. This one's called the strings, which is patch 07 for, for the for the combinations. <laughs> Nice, nice. Okay, let's jump jump around a little bit. Here's one called Safe Sax, which is a uh, combination number twelve. <laughs> Jack Holman, how you doing? <laughs> um, okay, so we're jumping around a little bit. Some of my buttons are a little bit stubborn because it's an old piano. Um, this, speaking of piano, this is the grand piano voice that was on here. That was the combination of the grand piano voice. There's other piano voices on here, which is really good. Um, what does it show you? 
orchestra and wood. So. <laughs> I don't play around with the combinations that much. I usually just play around with the with the um, with the programs and everything like that. Okay, and also you got something right over here, which is um, let's see if I can find it on here, which is real cool. Kryptonite. <laughs> When you're a kid having this keyboard and you imagine all the stuff and it says Kryptonite, you're thinking about Superman, of course, which is which is really neat. All right, um, here's one called um, Orchestra Switch. <laughs> Right here. I used to be able to play that song, but not anymore. Um, but yeah, you get that idea of how. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right. Um. 90s, no, this is 70s piano. Let's see what that sounds like. <laughs> India, which is number 98. This is still combinations. I haven't gone to the programs yet. Not bad, not bad. Um, okay. Let's see what else we got here, which is really cool. Sax growl, which is uh, 82. <laughs> You also got combinations with drums. So say for instance, um, this one's called Big Drums, which is uh, number combination number 90, which is, it's I think it's like, uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 drum uh, kits together. Actually it had four drum kits for six, six different kind of kits together at the same time. <laughs> All right, so let's get to the programs. Um, now, let me show you something on this keyboard, which is pretty cool. And I'm going to load up a different uh, section on here. The T series is what they call a Korg M1 on steroids. The reason for that is because, honestly, this is an M1. This is this is definitely this is this is all the guts of an M1 with the upgraded screen, this drive, and upgraded paneling. Uh, on top of that, you have a you have an upgraded chip, which is the two mega world chip. Um, back then, that was like big. The sequencer is upgraded to like uh, fifty thousand notes. Um, the back of the panel, you have MIDI in, out, and through. I'm sorry, you have MIDI in, out, and through, but you got four sets of outs on here. Um, plus, on the M1, one of the card slots is on top. Instead of the on top, it's in the back which is really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up. If you were to get a Korg M1, this is what it's going to sound like. So even from the demo. So I'm going to, I'm going to start it from the demo. And what I did is I, I transferred my T-Series into an M1. Oops. 
and this is what it sounds like. <laughs> bought the M1, that's what they heard, which is really cool. So that's the um, that's basically the M1, the Korg M1 demo, right there. And all the all the most of the um, the patches that I played for uh, Program A was basically all the M1 patches. So right now, this is it's a Korg M1. So if you, the first patch is universal. And usually on a Korg M1, the last patch is surprise, so. That's a surprise patch on there. Which is really cool. Um, drop. So now since I said now since I have the Core T3, what I was thinking about doing is that making that into an M1. Just just all the M1 programs and sounds on here. And just having this as a regular Core T series. So um, I mean this this lots of stuff that you could do with just this one keyboard alone, not including all the cards and stuff like that. By the way, this is a T2EX. Excuse me. T2EX, you can load samples, actually, into it, which is pretty cool. Um, and yes, I mean, check this out. Hell's Bells. There's one in here that I like, um, the FV wave, which is uh, right here. Um, pluck, which is number 70, 79. These are just um, Korg M1 programs. Um, Ring Bell, which is number 35. Of course, the famous Lore Sound, which is number 30. This, it's on a T-Series, too. It's on the O and W series, which is really neat. Um, my number two button is Nimbus. Nimbus is this one right here. And that's that mandolin trim. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load it right back into the T series. And thank God my disk drive still works. Uh, till this very day, I mean, you can still find these, but people are, are basically um, they're selling them for like five or six hundred dollars, even eight hundred dollars. I've been seeing these go for. Um, but it, for the T2, I've been seeing them go for over a thousand. Just just till this very day. Um, okay, so that's the T series demo again. And we got it back, which is good. 
Okay, so now let's go into Big B. And there's one right here, which is one of my favorite sounds on here, if I can find it. It's actually called, uh, let's see. Start Orchestra, here it is, number 80. And it sounds like the orchestra is actually really starting up and it goes into like a TX, TXH, what they call it. This is the hard EP. Piano pad. This is for like those like ballads. whatever because I'm actually tired guys. Tune drums, which is number 39. You know what else got me hooked on this keyboard on the Arsenio Hall show back then? The Arsenio Hall show, they had like six of these on stage. Um, one of the main guys that played the piano had a piano with him and had a T1. Uh, Star, which were, her name was Star, actually had a T3, and I think she had a T2 right by, but there were like six or seven of these on stage. Now the tune drum is basically, so these are all tuned to C. Chromatic. Which is really cool. So if I do, uh, do a tune on that but it's 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 really cool um 88 is wave wave weep okay uh let's see here Fantasy, which is number 60. And I'm just jumping around, everybody. New slap bass, which is number 44. <laughs> not mistaking with the slap bass. Let's see if I can find it on here. I think it's probably a 42. Uh, let's see. That's a synth bass right there. Ah, super slap. It's not mistaken with this one. No, that's not it. That's not it. There's one on here that it's basically like the slap bass of um, Steinfeld. Seinfeld and Sons. Seinfeld, I'm sorry, not Seinfeld, Sons. <laughs> uh, if I can find it, fretless, acoustic, super slap. It's on the M1, that's why. That's why I can't find it. It's on the M1. And it had that, it had that, uh... <laughs> sound exactly like this. It sounded, um, 
it sounded different, which is pretty cool. I wish I would have kept the M1 on there so I could show you. Actually, you know, you know what? Let me load it up. Let me load it back up. So this is just the um, the M1, and I'm gonna show you that same bass sound. So I'm gonna load it back up. This takes a little while. They, this didn't take too much time to load up, which is pretty cool. Okay, there we go. Complete. So that's the same. I think I'm in the wrong key, so... And that's, that's a Steinfeld M1 bass. That's a Steinfeld M1 bass. And the favorite piano is this one right here. Oops. I'm not getting any pedal here. No pedal. Aha! I know why. Because it's reversed. It's reversed. So hold on one minute. Probably playing it wrong though, but that's that famous, that famous piano sound, which is pretty cool. Um, if you want to know more about this keyboard, uh, this lots and lots and lots, which I'm going to cover in another video, and um, basically try to cover. Here, let me let me load up the uh, the T series again. I'm gonna try to cover as much as I can on this video. I mean, on this video about this keyboard, but I'm gonna make a totally separate video of all of my favorite sounds, all of my favorite uh, programs and combinations, and plus all the sequences that are on here. Um, meanwhile, it's loading up the T series. There we go. Here's the piano eight. Almost the same thing as the uh, M1 piano, but just a little bit, it's not out there. And this time it just says Piano 8, which is put to the Piano 8 Part 2, which is, which is really cool. Um, bamboo Trim, check this out, which is really neat. press it very low, you didn't know what to think, you know, which is really neat. Um, dream Pad, which is number 40. Magic organ. There's one in here also called Magic Voice, which I'm trying to find. It's, oh, lore. Well, I, I already showed you the lore sound. Um, this one's called a Koto Trim. So that's very slow. If I were to bring it up an octave. Really nice, really nice. Um, try to think of some other sounds that I liked on here. I like them all. Guitar sounds. And so, Bank B, if 
probably going to do the same thing. Uh, let's see. Bank B, the guitar sounds what sound like, say, for instance, let's see if I can find an acoustic guitar. I have to get my ropes back on this thing again. <laughs> but usually, uh, a pick, okay, this is called finger picking. Much better. Which is really neat. Okay, so we got that. Um, percussive wave. Super EP, which is this one right here. Nice. Nice. Uh, Cha Voice. and I'm going to play like a little short demo and then I'm going to call it a night because I am tired. I'm really, really tired. <laughs> um, let's see. The one that I wanted to do that was really, really cool. We already did Fantasy. Start Orchestra. This one over here is called Mystery, which is, um, see this one right here. So let's give it a mystery. Honestly, I haven't played with that. Oh, check this out. Here's the pipe organ. Pipe organ too. <laughs> uh, um, I, I know, I said one last sound. Check this out. Here is the jazz organ. Close this out with one more demo of the song, uh, which is really cool. Um, one of my other favorite demos on here is uh, the Duke.
thank you so far, thank you so much for watching this video. Do me a favor, click like, subscribe, follow me on everything. Go to my website www.chriskrisnichol.com. And um, if you want to know more about this keyboard or any of the other keyboards that I have on in my collection, uh, please do me a favor, write comments, uh, share this with your friends and everything. And um, I can show you more. I'm going to do more, more videos on this keyboard alone. This is such a wonderful, beautiful workstation that I will cherish forever and have in my collection forever. So if you wanted to know more about it, feel free. Anyway, enjoy the rest of the demo. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.